Okay, welcome everyone. This flip classroom video is going to give us an introduction to the topic of acids and bases. So kind of one of the organizing tools we have when it comes to acids and bases is the pH scale, which you've probably heard about sometime before in your life. So the pH scale is a range of numbers from zero up to 14. And from zero to seven, those are compounds considered acids. And from seven up to 14 are bases. And smack dab in the middle at a value of seven are neutral compounds. So key idea with the pH scale, the acidity of something increases as the pH decreases. So as we get closer to that value of zero, things become more acidic. And then the basicity, which is also sometimes known as the alkalinity, sometimes you heard things being alkaline. So the basicity increases as the pH value increases, so as closer we get to 14. Now, if we have a substance that has a pH value of 12, for example, we would say that it is a base, but it still has some slightly acidic contributions to it. This is a scale, it's a range. It's not definitively one thing or the other. So we're gonna get into that a little bit more as we go throughout this unit. So some properties of acids. Acids tend to have a sour taste. So back in olden times, before um, the early chemists knew it was a bad thing, they would actually taste their chemicals and they would use that as a way to identify properties of the chemicals. Again, do not do this today, okay? We have modern science, which tells us this is a really bad idea to taste things when you don't know what they are. Um, however, we can still see some of this if you think about most of your sour tasting foods that you eat those tend to be acidic compounds, okay? So we also have something in chemistry called litmus paper. So litmus is a naturally occurring um, plant extract that we can take and basically infuse into dye, and it turns red or blue depending upon whether it's exposed to an acid or a base. So in the presence of an acid, litmus paper is red. Um, some acids will also react with metal to form hydrogen gas. This is a single replacement reaction that occurs. Also, as we found out in our chemical equations unit, during neutralization reactions, an acid reacts with a base to form a salt plus water. And don't forget, salt does not just mean table salt, sodium chloride in this example. It's any ionic compound. Um, acids also are electrolyte. They conduct electricity when they are dissolved in water. And like I said, they have pH values of less than seven. And again, doesn't mean that they're not at all basic. They can still have some basic contributions to them. They're not completely acidic. Just because they have pH less than seven, it's a range, but we classify them as an acid. So some examples of acids include citrus fruits, milk, and vinegar. So some properties of bases. I really want to emphasize the letter B. This is how I always remember bases. They have a bitter taste, okay? And so this is ones that kind of taste yucky when you put them in your mouth. Um, and they turn litmus paper blue. So bases, bitter, blue. Bases, when they get on your skin, will actually feel slippery. The explanation I've read for this is you actually have the oils on your skin reacting with the base through a process known as saponification, which is actually how we make soap. So when you get a base on your skin, basically you're making some soap, which is why it feels slippery. Bases react with acids to form a salt plus water, so just the opposite of what acids do. Bases also conduct electricity just like acids. They're also electrolytes, and they have a pH value of greater than seven. So common examples of bases include cleaning products around your house, and also antacids. So if you got that upset stomach, maybe some heartburn going on, your parents probably have some antacids in their medicine cabinet. Well, those help to neutralize the acids so they don't get that heartburn, that damage to the esophagus going on. Okay, so I have a few examples for you to try. Go ahead, label these as either an acid or a base. Give it a guess, and we're gonna go over those in a few seconds. So go ahead, pause the video, Think it through, label them, and then we're going to go ahead and talk about this. Okay, so drain cleaner oftentimes involves lye. So acid or base? This one's actually a base. Drain cleaners contain lye, which is a very, very strong base. It has a pH value close to 14. And this actually helps to basically eat up and dissolve any blockages in your drains. 
milk. This one might be a little bit surprising, but it's actually slightly acidic. Okay, now this probably makes sense if you think about milk once it goes bad, it gets sour tasting, right? Another way to think about the amino acids that are in the proteins of milk, that's what makes it slightly acidic, okay? Soap, think about soap, it's a cleaning product. So it's gonna be a base, because we use lye to help make our soap. Apples. Okay, so apples, these are going to be acids, especially think about that sour apple taste that we're so familiar with. That is going to be what causes them to have an acidic value. And then pure water, clean, nothing in it. This, actually a little bit of a trick question, it's neutral. Pure water should be neutral with a pH of 7. Now, if you start dissolving things in it, that can affect whether it's an acid or a base because it's right on that middle line. But if it is truly pure, it should have a pH of 7. Okay, so we have different definitions of acids. And one definition is named after the scientist Arrhenius. And he said that Arrhenius acids, when dissolved in water, so when we form aqueous solutions, they release hydronium ions. So a hydronium ion is H3O plus one. So it's a water molecule that has gained an extra proton, an extra H plus. Okay, so if we look at this example here, we have hydrochloric acid, HCl, plus water. When those two things combine, we have the chloride ion left over, and the hydrogen from our hydrochloric acid combines with our water to give us hydronium. So in this case, according to the Arrhenius definition of an acid, hydrochloric acid is an acid. For Arrhenius bases, these are compounds that form hydroxide ions when dissolved in water, when they form those aqueous solutions. So an example of this is ammonia, NH3. When it reacts with water, we get ammonium, NH4 plus 1, plus hydroxide. So this is actually, if you go to a store and buy ammonia in the cleaning section, what you're really getting is ammonia, which is a gas dissolved in water. So you're actually getting ammonium hydroxide. Okay, and then just a quick reminder, salts, those ionic compounds I talked about earlier, will dissociate in water. They're going to split up into their ions. But they do not form hydronium or hydroxide ions. Therefore, they are not acidic or basic for our purposes. So sodium chloride, for example, here, plus water is going to split into sodium, Na plus 1, chlorine, Cl minus 1, and then water. Okay, so we have another definition we're going to talk about, which is the Bronsted-Lowry theory. Again, two scientists, Bronsted-Lowry, campus definition. And they stated that acids are proton donors, okay? So in this case, a proton we can think about as being a hydrogen ion, H plus 1, okay? So normally the hydrogen atom has one proton and one electron. There's no neutrons in there. So if we go ahead and get rid of that electron, we're just left with a proton. And then bases are the exact opposite. They are proton acceptors. So if we look at this example before, we have our hydrochloric acid, which as we guess is going to be the acid, and water, which is this case going to be a base. So key thing here with Bronsted-Lowry theory, you always have an acid reacting with the base. So my hydrogen from my hydrochloric acid is going to my water. So the HCl is donating its proton to the base that is accepting it. Now Bronsted-Lowry theory goes one step further and also defines things, defines things called conjugate acids and conjugate bases. So conjugate acids are the species that are left over after a proton has been accepted, okay? So when the base accepts the proton, we are left with the conjugate acid, okay? So if we look at this example down below, we have hydrochloric acid is donating a proton to water, okay? So water is our key substance. Once it's accepted that proton, Okay, it becomes hydronium, which is now the conjugate acid. Conjugate bases are what is left over from donating a proton. Okay, so my acid, my hydrochloric acid, donates its proton 
And the thing we're left with is the chloride ion, which is their conjugate base. Now, a few things to help you keep track of all this. Acids and bases are always reactants. Conjugate acids and conjugate bases are always on the product side. Okay. The other thing, acids become a conjugate base. Okay. They flip what they are if they've lost or gained the proton. Okay, so acids pair with conjugate bases, bases become conjugate acids. So I have a mnemonic device to help you out with this. I'm going to warn you, it's a very bad mnemonic device. It is bad, okay? B-A-A-D. Bases accept a proton, acids donate a proton, okay? I warned you it was bad ahead of time, but it always helps me remember it. So what I recommend when you look at these examples, you want to compare the starting point to the initial point, the ending point. So my HCl goes to Cl. Okay, that's the thing that's staying the same, the root base. And I see what happens to it. Well, it loses a proton, so it must be donating it. Because it donates it, the HCl is, a is the acid, therefore the chloride ion is the conjugate base. Okay, so I have an example for you here. Water reacts with HNO3 to form hydronium and NO3 minus 1. Go ahead, let's talk through this one. We're labeled the acid, the base, the conjugate acid, and the conjugate base. Okay, well, the acid and the base have to be on the left-hand side. The conjugate acid and the conjugate base have to be on the right-hand side. Now we're going to pick one thing and we're going to track it throughout. So in this case, I'm going to pick water, okay, just because it's really easy to follow. So I have water on my left-hand side, and on my right-hand side, my water has gained a proton, is accepted, okay? So we think about bad bases, accept. So that means my water molecule, H2O, must be my base, and my HNO3 by process elimination must be my acid, okay? Now if we go one step further, we know bases, once they gain that proton, become the conjugate acid. Okay, so my hydronium ion is my conjugate acid. And the other thing I'm left over with is my conjugate base, my nitrate. Okay, so we have the acid pairing up with the conjugate base. Both conjugate acid and conjugate base are on the right-hand side. Acid and base are on the left-hand side. Okay, so now I have another example for you. Okay, so for this one, ammonia plus water react to give us ammonium and hydroxide. So go ahead, pause the video this time. I want you to try this by yourself. Remember, acids and bases are on the reactant side. Conjugate acids, conjugate bases are on the product side. So go ahead, pause the video, try it yourself, and then we'll talk about it in a few seconds. Okay, so let's work through this one. Now, again, I'm going to pick one thing to track throughout this reaction. Now, I could pick ammonium, or sorry, ammonia, or I could pick water. I'm just going to pick water and be consistent. So, if I look at my water on the left-hand side compared to my water on the product side, well, in this case, I see it has lost a proton, okay? So, I think about my bad bases except no that can't be right so it must be the acid in this case my water is now my acid that means ammonia nh3 must be my base okay so if i think about that bases except so if i think about my ammonia i would expect on the product side yep i see that it has gained a proton so that's going to be the base now i know bases pair with conjugate acids and acids pair with conjugate bases, okay? Remember, you have to flip that. So if ammonia is my base, ammonium is my conjugate acid, okay? And then if water is my acid, hydroxide, what I'm left with, must be my conjugate base, okay? So I know this last concept here, the Bronsted-Lowry theory, acids and bases, takes a little bit of practice, Okay, I want you to be familiar with these terms. If you go on to AP Chemistry, I promise we're going to do a lot more practice with this concept. But I just want you to have a taste of what these things are. And if, always, if you have any questions, please let me know. I'm happy to help you guys out. This is a great topic for um, office hours. Otherwise, thanks for watching. Remember, you can always send me an email, a message on Remind, 
or come see me during office hours Tuesday at 1 p.m. Thanks for watching, everyone.